go straight to Revelation, understand that we're going to deal with the great dragon. You've heard a lot about the dragon, the seven-headed dragon, the monster, the beast. What does it all mean? Well, we're going to talk about it today. We're going to actually look at some very powerful scriptures that might help unravel the mystery of the great dragon and what a role that this uh, illustration portrays in the last days. Certainly, John, when he received this revelation from the Lord, was very descriptive in his visualization of this beast that rises from the sea. We'll come right back in a few moments and get right into it, The Great Dragon. I have a brand new DVD entitled The Total Eclipse of the Sun. I mean, we have these great solar eclipses, the constellations in the heavens of Revelation 12, and many other signs that God gives in the last days. I have this DVD available at my website only. It's a powerful presentation of the coming of Jesus Christ and everything you need to know about his return. Get it now at my website. All right, all right. So the great dragon, the great dragon. Why would the Lord want to keep referring to the great dragon? Well, there's a couple things that we need to understand. God wanted us to understand the season we would be in before. You, know, you just don't want to shock the world with the great dragon without understanding you're in that season. So look what it says. I want you to go to Luke chapter 21. A couple verses I'd like to read. Jesus has asked the question about the end times, and he begins to share different points. Matter of fact, let's go to verse 8. I'm in Luke 21, verse 8. Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, the great signs, the fearful sights, well, we know that there's all kinds of things that you could relate this to, asteroids, comets, uh, solar eruptions on the sun, uh, Different kinds of things could happen that God could do that are, I'll give you an example. During Hurricane Maria, the ocean disappeared around the Bahamas. It disappeared for about two and a half miles off the, uh, off the shores of near Tampa Bay. They disappeared near the Keys, the Florida Keys. They disappeared near Puerto Rico, and there's all kinds of this footage, people walking out, literally walking out into the, where the ocean was, and there's no ocean. And you got a, you got a guy standing there with his camera, and he's, as far as his eyes could see, the ground is dry. Where did the ocean go? This happened. It's quite extraordinary. When I first seen this, I thought, this is unbelievable. Then I was watching the Weather Channel, and they're explaining that this is very rare, almost never heard of. Uh, it just, it takes an unbelievable situation to cause this. But Hurricane Maria, apparently God used to uh, once again demonstrate what he did when he parted the Red Sea. The Bible says that a strong east wind came and separated the waters, and the children of Israel walked across on dry land. Now, my whole life, I kept thinking, how in the world did that happen? If the wind was that strong, it should have blown the people over. I mean, to part the waters. But, but uh, now I understand it. God apparently brought a storm from the east that sucked up the water and took it out into the uh, way out. And then later, the water would come back in. Matter of fact, all the water where this happened around in the ocean, it all came back within 48 hours. It was back, okay? Now, in the, so apparently what happened, and I could see this on the videos that, the, that God, I could then understand how two million Israelis could walk across the Red Sea in eight hours 
which they did. They walked across overnight. It would take about eight hours because as far as your eyes could see, the land was dry. So having seen this now, you understand that God can do many great signs and fearful sights, and he will do these in these end times. Now, we had a situation develop uh, with the Revelation 12 sign in which God spoke about a great dragon. But we're going to look at a couple verses there, but I want to take you into chapter 13 of Revelation in a moment. Let's read what it says in the book of Revelation chapter 12. There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. This was that great constellational alignment that we've seen on September 23rd, 2017. She being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now, this obviously is in reference to the beast that... John describes in the very next chapter. But go down, if you will, to verse 9. We get an understanding who the Lord is trying to let us know who the great dragon is. It says in verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, meaning he was cast out of heaven because of the rebellion, the, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and the angels were cast out with him. So we know this happened during the rebellion in heaven. Satan is referred to as the great dragon or the old serpent. He is the devil, the deceiver, the liar, the accuser of the brethren. We could go on and on and on. But as we go further into Revelation, go with me to chapter 13. For the Bible says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast, Rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So once again, John sees the great dragon. He calls it a beast, but he describes it the same as he does in Revelation 12, that it has seven heads and ten horns. And now we're going to understand what it means. That, it, it, that yes, it was in a constellation alignment. Yes, it is a metaphor. But now we're going to understand its deeper meaning. He says the beast uh, would, be, would rise in this end times. And if you go to verse chapter 3, excuse me, Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who's able to make war with him? Now we're referring to the dragon we know is Satan or Lucifer, and he's giving power to this Antichrist leader, of this beast system, this one world government, this new world order. And uh, there's no question that this dragon is Satan. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Look, I don't like a confrontation like anyone else. But I do realize, I'll be practical, I will be real with you, that we're in this world, but we're not of this world, okay? We deal with demonic forces on a daily basis. We're inundated with them, and we don't even know it. We face them, we see them, we speak to them, we hear them, but most of the time we don't recognize them. We don't understand that the forces of darkness are trying every way possible to derail the kingdom of God. But I'm glad that Jesus took his disciples to the gates of hell there in Jerusalem, I mean in Israel, and said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. 
If Paul wrote this, if God be for us, who can be against us? And I'm here to tell you right now, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And matter of fact, Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread over the serpents and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. Nevertheless, rejoice not because these spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written down in glory. So we, we understand that we're in a confrontation. The, Paul wrote in Ephesians, For he, for the Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly greater than we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And I love when he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? And who can separate us from the love of God? So we're willing to take on the challenge. We're willing to go forward. We're ready to decapitate Goliath as he stands in front of our abilities to move forward with the word of the Lord. Now go back to Revelation. This beast, look at verse 4. They worship the dragon. They worship the dragon who gave power to the beast or to the Antichrist. We're living in a day when the Luciferians, literally the satanic rituals are prevalent throughout the world. Now, Russ Dizdar, who's a great friend of ours and a tremendous man of God out of Canton, Ohio, speaks of how over 35 years he's done exorcisms, deliverances, and has prayed with people that have been demonically charged or oppressed or in some cases uh, possessed. Uh, he, he has done this. He's used by many law enforcement agencies. Call him to crime scenes. If there is uh, certain crime scenes where it looks as if there's been some kind of satanic slaughter or satanic ritual murder, they will bring him into the crime scene to, to actually bring him in to look at all the photos of the crime scene to, and have him help them understand who would do this, what type of group would do this, what kind of Satanist group. Is it voodoo? Is it some other type of of black magic, some occultic group? And he's able to look at the symbols. They always leave symbols behind. They always leave evidence behind. And he's able to identify the type of group that would have done this type of crime. This is unbelievable, folks. He preaches that in this last days, there will be what's called the black awakening. That's when the bottomless pit is opened, according to Revelation, and it's like locusts come out. It's the demons of hell. Now, I can read in Revelation 16, and I'll show you. Go there, if you will. In just a moment, we will take a look at these three unclean spirits that come out into the world to affect the world in the last days. And they literally come right out of the mouth of the dragon. I'll be right back in just a moment with more on the great dragon. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. All right, all right, grab your Bible, go again with me, Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to take you to Revelation 16 in a moment, but go back to Revelation 13. Let's look at this dragon again, the characteristics of the dragon, the beast. Here's what it says in verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given to him to continue 40 and 2 months. That's three and a half years. He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So there is a temporary, what looks like a temporary victory for the Antichrist And, of course, he'll bring along his false prophet. Now, go with me to Revelation 16, because remember, it is the dragon that's giving power to the Antichrist. 
It's the dragon that's giving power to the new world order. And those that worship the dragon would be known as Luciferians. They are followers of Lucifer. And they don't run around with horns and a pitchfork. They can look just absolutely as, as normal as anyone else on the planet. It's what they do in the darkness that would raise the hair on the back of your neck. Thank God you've got Christ in your life. You do have Christ because if you don't, you're literally living on borrowed time, okay? Let me talk to you about that in a minute. Revelation 16, let's look what the dragon does. The Bible says in verse 12, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. John sees, can you imagine seeing this in the spirit? He sees the dragon, Lucifer, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, the unholy trinity, if you will. And he sees coming out of their mouth nothing but unclean, perverse spirits of darkness, demonic, uh, d destructive, uh, coming out to do affect the world. And they go right for the top. They go right after the kings. Now, there's a physical sign taking place when this is happening. Why in the world would you bring it up? The river Euphrates. But this is so whatever's going on in the spiritual world, you can recognize it in the physical. So <clears throat> the Lord actually shows us the river Euphrates and says that when the, wa the water's going to dry up. Folks, in the last eight years, the river Euphrates has dried up 80% in eight years. I've actually looked at the Google map of the river Euphrates eight years ago. And looked at them now, and they're just, it's unbelievable. Okay, just saying. I'm just saying. Um, this, this happens when the river Euphrates is drying up. And it says here that he saw these three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, the mouth of the false prophet. And look what they do they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty, the battle, folks, of Armageddon. Now, it's so ironic that we've witnessed uh, these kings in the east, North Korea, Kim Jong-un, uh, China, South Korea, Japan, Russia, and even some of the other uh, nations in that area. South Asia has been as if it's been in inundated with the spirit of darkness. They're, they're threatening one another on a daily basis, talking nuclear annihilation. Kim Jong-un made the statement that he wanted to sink Japan that they were no longer needed to be a neighbor. Uh, there's been references to annihilation of the United States. And of course, even our president has said that Kim Jong-un may have just a short time left. There's been constant rhetoric and hatred and saber rattling and rockets flying and ships movement and the Chinese troops on the border and the Russian troops on the border and the South Korean troops are on the highest alert and there's been nuclear bomb detonations underground causing 6.3 earthquakes. It's as if we're seeing the kings of the east being gathered for what I've been calling on the internet the South Asian Armageddon. I'm not saying it's the Armageddon of the book of Revelation yet, but I'm saying that, I mean, are you serious? Why? What kind of demonic force? And it's, it's amazing. Even the dragon, the symbol of the dragon itself is idolized in that part of the world. It's quite extraordinary what we've been witnessing. And so the Lord says that these demon spirits out of that mouth of the dragon 
Now, we know that the Antichrist has not risen yet. He's not in power. We know the false prophet will come along, alongside him. And there's a process before that takes place. But we're already seeing the ground being laid, the, 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 the tension, the hatred, the murder, the madness, the, the, the unbelievable uh, wickedness that goes on in places like Syria and Iraq by ISIS. But now it's the east. It's the South Asian area. All of these areas, we have to keep an eye on them as we go forward. Certainly, there is the spirit of darkness. And look what Jesus said. I love this. Jesus says in verse 15, when all this is going on, he says these words in red. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. During the midst of all of this chaos, these are the days of chaos, Jesus is saying, I'm coming. In an hour you think not, the Son of Man will come. He said, watch and pray, for you know not the day nor the hour that the Lord doth come. Another scripture says, no man knows the day nor the hour the Lord cometh. Not the angels in heaven, not the Son of God, but the Father only. Another scripture says in Peter, for the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Another scripture Jesus said, for as lightning goes from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. I'm telling you, he's coming back. He's coming. You better get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because he's coming. You know, that's why we put out that DVD, Rapture Ready. We put that out to teach people, to help people, first of all, see the signs of the end time. See the apocalyptic events gathering. Look what's going on in the current world events and how they are related. You can look, you can look at the current events today and look through a biblical lens and see the prophetic manifestation of a time like we've never seen before. And so people should be ready. I don't know the day or the hour of Christ is returning. I can only see the signs of his returning. And it's unbelievable what we've been witnessing. And the dragon, Satan, the, the, the accuser of the brethren, the spirit of murder, the spirit of rebellion, the, the one who sows discord among the brethren, the one that comes against the church, the one that tries to stop the gospel, he will be defeated. I've got news for the devil. He will be cast, he and his angels, into the lake of fire, Jesus said, uh, to be consumed and the smoke of his torment will ascend up forever and ever. So we are living in a time folks, where the body of Christ needs to recognize we're on the winning side. We are about ready to leave this planet. I don't know when, but i tell you what, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be amazing if the Lord should come tonight and gather the redeemed and take us to glory? I mean, come on now. This would be amazing. And only the Lord Jesus Christ can do this. He is our Savior, our Redeemer, our hope. He's our blessed hope. No wonder uh, when Jesus ascended into heaven and they were standing there watching, an angel spoke from the sky and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing into the heavens? This same Jesus that goes away is coming again in like manner. I'm telling you, folks, he's coming soon. We'll be right back in a few moments with more on this, the coming apocalypse. Available from Paul Begley, his CD, Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this world be Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. No Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. All right, all right. Now, this, this great dragon is going to have to have more than just the Antichrist and the false prophet. He keeps talking about seven heads, but talks about ten horns, which the Scripture says are ten kings. Go with me, if you will, to Revelation chapter 17 for one moment, and let me read what it says. I'm just going to go straight to verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings 
which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. Praise God. For he is the Lord of lords and the king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Is that you? Are you with the lamb? Are you with the Lord of lords and the king of kings, or are you going to listen and can follow the beast? Look, folks, if you're not saved, I know you're a good person. And look, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want you to have the greatest joy. See, being a Christian is filled with so much joy. There's so much joy. There's so much hope. There's so much uh, blessings. I mean, you're blessed going in and you're blessed going out and you're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. I mean, you're an overcomer. You can lay hands on the sick. They recover. God will lift you out of this despair and put your feet on a solid foundation. You're a, you become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be one in that number. I want to be with the King of Kings. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. I'm believing in Yeshua as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. I believe Christ died on the cross for my sins, that he rose from the grave, ascended to heaven, and is coming back. And I want to be saved. I repent. I confess before God, and I declare Christ is my Savior. In the name of Jesus, I am saved. Amen and amen and praise God.